So now we are at Hamlet, Act 5. We're going to look at the first scene, the one with the gravediggers in it, to begin with. Okay? So, when we look at the text, we see that the setting is in the graveyard outside of Elsnor Castle. Now, any castle in uh, medieval times, just it would be like a small village, actually. And so they'd have their own uh, church, they'd have a chapel, they'd have their own uh, priests, they'd have their own uh, farmers around it, you know, to supply the castle. They'd have their own graveyard. So the Elsinore graveyard would be the traditional graveyard for all of the people who died in there in the castle over time. And currently we see that a, a grave digger is uh, digging a grave. Two grave diggers are working. But, um, and you'll notice in other uh, texts, other copies of Shakespeare, that the grave diggers are sometimes called clowns. In part because they're joking around here. Uh, they are, they're actually the, the actors who would be the comedians in the troupe. That's who would play the grave diggers because of their, because they're telling these jokes. So that's who would be playing these parts. Um, the grave diggers are talking about Ophelia, right? Ophelia uh, drowned in the in the in the the creek in the brook in the last scene. She was completely beside herself she was what we would call mad in Shakespeare terms um, it has no real meaning in the modern language but in Shakespeare okay when you say mad it just it means you've lost your mind you've had a nervous breakdown you're depressed you're suicidal you're anything that is irrational okay and she when she uh, fell into the creek, did not save herself. Gertrude said as she was describing it to Laertes, she floated for a while and just continued singing her goofy songs and talking about the flowers. And then she sank into the water when her dress got soaked. Um, so she didn't help herself, which is a gray area if you're thinking about uh, did she kill herself? Well, she fell in by accident, apparently. The, the tree branch broke. But then she didn't save herself. So, hmm. Sort of suicidal. Anyway, that's what the gravediggers are talking about here. The one asks, is she to be buried in a Christian burial when she willfully seeks her own salvation? When she willfully went to, you know, the afterlife? And the one says, yep. That's what the priest said, so that's what we're doing. Okay, so they're digging the graves. And they talk about whether or not she should be, whether or not a person like her should be allowed in the graveyard. Theologically speaking, well, according to church policy, you would not be able to be buried in the graveyard of the church if you had killed yourself. That's what they're talking about. But they... They... Are talking in that general area that general direction for uh, a few minutes and then they shift over to joking about digging graves now the jokes that they're telling uh, they're about um, like Adam was a gentleman uh, because he he bore arms he was able to dig which means he had arms okay. it's sort of a sideways joke uh, he says that the uh, person who builds stronger than a carpenter or a shipbuilder or anyone is a is a grave digger because his his ho homes his houses last forever the houses of the of the holy that they're buried in they last till doomsday while they're telling these jokes Hamlet and Horatio come in now they're just uh, walking through the graveyard they're not going anywhere in particular uh, they're just talking about what's been going on we know that um, Hamlet has come back from England he didn't make it to England 
the whole pirate thing, but we'll hear about that later. Um, to begin with, though, when they walk in, the one grave digger has, has exited to go and buy some alcohol. The other one is sitting here singing while he's working, while he's digging. He's not sitting. He's digging his grave, and he's doing something very peculiar to us, but it's not peculiar to them. I need to explain. Um, while he's digging, he's coming upon bones. Now, he's digging in a graveyard, of course, but you'd think he'd dig where there were no graves. Well, the simple fact is that in a medieval graveyard, there, the graveyards were not designed to be uh, permanent resting places, really. Um, when you would bury someone in the, in the churchyard, they would, or the, or the graveyard, they would stay underground until the space was needed. And then the grave digger, one of his jobs was to dig up the old bones to put in the new bodies. And um, when they dig up the old bones, they'd take the bones and put them in a, a charnel house they'd, or in the, the catacombs in the basement of the church. And you'd have stacks and stacks and stacks of bones and stacks of skulls and stacks of ribs and stacks of, you know, thigh bones and... And if you've ever been to the catacombs in Europe, you've seen these. They're, they're just rows of rooms full of bones under the churches usually. Or they would have a charnel house. They'd have a, a building outside the church that they'd put them in. And so as he's digging, he actually is coming across skulls and bones of dead people. And Hamlet's going to talk with him about that. But before he does... He, uh, he comments, you know, the, the guy is singing and he says, this guy, he doesn't have any, uh, is, isn't he sensitive about what he's doing? Uh, he doesn't have any feeling for his business. And Horatio says, well, he's used to it. You know, you can get used to anything. So as they sing, as he sings, he throws up a skull uh, and he, he throws bones up onto the to the to the ground he's he's in a hole digging bones up and he throws them up onto the ground he'll take care of them later but they're just bones so he just sort of throws them up there and that incidentally when we think about the stage that Shakespeare played on now this is from the top so there would be a pillar here and a pillar here so like you know from the front there'd be a pillar coming up and then the roof on top of it, so the stage would be here, okay? And so we're looking down on the stage. There's a pillar here and a pillar here, and there's a trap door in the center of the stage. The back wall is up here. This is where the, the heiress was hanging earlier. This trap door is used here. That's how the guy is in the grave. The trap door has been lowered. It's, it's a platform, that gets raised or lowered. It's not. It doesn't flip open. It. It's a section of the floor that rises and lowers. So the stage, it under the stage, the the trap door has been lowered down. So it's and I'm not sure how it was suspended. If it was hanging or if it was pushed from the bottom, but that's where the guy is standing, and he's throwing bones up out of the trap door up onto the stage okay and as he does that uh Ham hamlet says well these these bones that he doesn't seem to have any respect for that skull that skull had a tongue in it and could sing once he's singing so that skull could sing once and that knave jowls it to the ground as if it were cain's jawbone he's just throwing it around um it might have been a, a famous politician. So Hamlet says he might have been someone important. And this other one that he throws up, it might have been a courtier who would speak, you know, so politely to the, to the king and queen, um, praise Lord whoever's horse, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. He just says this might be the person. Or, or maybe this one is 
uh, Lady Worms, you know, sort of a, a play on words because Worms is actually a, a town in Germany. Uh, but my Lady Worms, because she's a lady now with worms in her head because she's dead, that, that may be who it is this time. And, um, and he says, didn't these bones have any more breeding in them than he's treating them like? Doesn't he, isn't he going to respect these, these bones? But there's a problem with that. And this is where he gets a little philosophical. Um, these people, like the, he says, this one might be a lawyer. But he says, well, so where is your arguments now, your quillity, your, your written arguments, things that you write with your quill, your cases, your tenures, your tricks as a lawyer? This guy, this grave digger is rudely knocking him about and it doesn't matter who he was, right? This one here, he might have been uh, a great buyer of land, and he had all of this wonderful land that he has and vouchers for land and re recoveries. So he was like a, 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 a landlord. And then it says, and, and it didn't do him any good. It did him, he, he ends up with no more of his purchase, you know, even double purchases than the length and breadth of a pair of indentures. Um, it's a, it's a strange figure of speech but basically he's saying that the land that he owns now is just the length and breadth of a human being an indentured servant okay so the guy is laying down in the grave and that's all the land he owns now it's sort of where we get the term bought the farm right um if you buy the farm you die it's a it's an old um figure of speech and he says so this guy big landowner and that doesn't help him he's got the grave digger throwing his head around and and why shouldn't he i mean he's his life was sort of pointless but really more to the point all life is sort of pointless then isn't it um if these important people can just be bones now and He's already mentioned that his father has been killed. He said, you know, uh, a, a man as important as my father can be killed. Is life really that important anyway? I mean, I've killed a couple people and it just didn't seem to bother me. And I don't even care if I die. What's life worth? Okay, what's the value of life? And so he and he comes to this while he's, you know, talking while he's watching the grave digger. Now he says, "I'm going to go talk to this guy." He says, "I'm going to, I'll speak to this fellow." He says, "Whose grave is this?" And the grave digger says, "Well, it's mine." And Hamlet says, "I think it must be yours since you're lying in it." Uh, so if if you lie in a grave, uh, then the grave is yours, right? And the gravedigger says, it's my grave because I'm digging it. And Hamlet says, yeah, and you're lying because it's not your grave. You're just digging it. So it must be your grave because you're lying in it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And and this little bit of joking goes on. For a while, he says, um, um, uh, Hamlet explains that you're lying in the grave, right? And the grave digger comes back, "'Tis a quick lie, sir." Now, quick actually is an, an old-fashioned word for living, for maybe of the quick and the dead. So he says, "'Yep, I'm I'm lying, but I'm not lying dead. It's a quick lie, and so quickly I give it back to you. So, okay, you're up. What's your next funny line?' So they're playing back and forth. So Hamlet asks outright, what man do you dig it for? Which means what, who do you dig it for? He doesn't really mean man, but the gravedigger says, no man. 
Oh, okay, so I've heard this before. Hamlet says, okay, well, how about what woman? And he, the gravedigger says, no woman either. Hmm. Okay, well, then who's going to be buried in it? And here comes the gravedigger's sort of big line. He says, someone who was a woman, but, God rest her soul, she's not a woman anymore. Now she's just a dead body. Because, of course, the woman is the soul. She's gone off to wherever, to heaven. Uh, so, you know, all of the jokes, the jokes of the gravedigger are really sort of funny. But they're sort of dark. And Hamlet says, okay, so um, he, he pauses in his question. He says, how long have you been doing this anyway? Like, what, you've been at this a while nothing seems to bother you how long you've been doing this and the grave digger says i've been doing it since king hamlet overcame fortinbras i've been a, a grave digger ever since that year and hamlet says well how long has that been now you notice the grave digger doesn't seem to know who hamlet is because he says well any fool can tell you how long that is it's the day hamlet was born that's the day that King Hamlet killed Fortinbras. Well, so this is some interesting dates that we didn't have earlier in the play, but they're not really incredibly important. It's just that um, that's the, the gravedigger doesn't know who he's talking to. And he says, Hamlet, the guy that just got sent to England for being mad, Hamlet says, oh, well, why was he sent to England? Well, because he was mad. And so he went there to either uh, recover his wits or it won't matter as much there. Well, why not? Because all the English are mad. So if he doesn't get any better, he'll fit right in. So they go on for a little while with more joking. And finally the gravedigger says, um, I've been the sexton here for 30 years. Okay. So we find out that uh, that's actually how old Hamlet is then. But as he's been digging graves this long, you know, he's gotten used to um, working with dead people. They make another joke or two. And then uh, this skull comes up, okay? And um, Hamlet says, who was it? And he says, oh, he was a horse and mad fellow. Uh, he was uh, someone who was sort of um, a pain in the butt, right? He says, this same skull was Yorick's skull, the king's jester. Now, the king's jester is uh, like, he's the joker, right? He's the jester, the comic relief in the, in the castle. That means this is the guy who would have been the jester when old Hamlet was the king and when young Hamlet was a young boy in the castle, we hear that he actually, it's up until the age he was seven. He was seven when York died, based on the numbers that we hear, uh, three and 20 years, right? Um, Hamlet then takes the skull from the hands of the grave digger, and he says, oh, this is York. I knew this guy. And he's looking at the head bone of one of his uh, uh, friends as a child. Now, friend in the sense of old man that probably helped take care of him, you know, and joked around with him and stuff. Uh, he says he, he bore me on his back, um, and he says I, I kissed him on the next page. But his, his first thought is, wow, this empty bone here, is an old friend of mine and it sort of you know gives him pause for a little bit when he continues thinking here he says yes he says i, I kissed those lips you know because he's a little kid he kisses him i used to kiss the guy um and he says where are your jibes now he's talking to the skull um you didn't you aren't around anymore you're dead what good was it you know, all your merriment. You'd tell jokes at the table. You'd goof around with my mom, uh, make make fun of her. And 
and you'd all laugh and you were like this jolly guy and now you're dead. What good was that? It's like that lawyer or that landlord. All of these dead people. It's like, what's the point? And then he turns to Horatio and he says, Horatio, I got a question for you. Alexander, Alexander the Great, right? Who is actually... I mean, if you ever read about him, he was way accomplished, right? And Hamlet says, Horatio, think about Alexander the Great for a minute. Do you think he he looked of this fashion in the earth? Do you think that as he's laying in the earth in his grave, he looks like this here dead guy, just the empty bone? You think he's the same? And he goes, yeah, I probably smelled the same way too. And, he, and Hamlet says, what is the point? What, look at what we become while, once we're dead. Okay. There, he says here, to what base uses may we return, Horatio? Why may not imagination trace the nobles of dust of Alexander till he'd, Find it stopping a bunghole, the the hole in a barrel or or in a boat. Why? How can we? Is there any reason for us to not think that a little chunk of Alexander is stuck in a beer cask somewhere, keeping it closed? I mean, that's how important he is compared to anyone. It's, there's no life is completely pointless, isn't it? And he, he explains, you know, to to Horatio. Horatio says, well, how could that be? And he says, well, so Alexander uh, died, and then he was buried, and then he turned into dirt, and that dirt turned into mud or clay, and that's what we stop beer barrels with. Now here is sort of the the important quote from all of this. It fits it all together and it and it does it with a pair of rhymes that's one of the ways that we know that shakespeare wanted us to focus on this imperious caesar dead and turned to clay might stop a hole to keep the wind away oh that the earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall expel the winter's flaw patch a wall to expel um that earth which kept the world in awe. Uh, human beings, theologically, are made of dirt. So that bit of dirt that amazed the world, now he could be patching a wall to keep the wind out. Caesar, what the heck is the point of any of this? Is really what it comes down to for Hamlet as he's standing in the graveyard. And then, as if on cue, I mean, really, they are on cue, in walks the whole funeral uh, procession for Ophelia. Now, we won't spend a long time with this other than to say that, mm, wait, here he is, Laertes is here, Laertes knows that Hamlet killed his father, Polonius. Um, Claudius has, um, he has a plan to kill Hamlet by using a sword, right? He says, Laertes, I can, I can get him to, to, uh, fence with you. And you can kill him accidentally. That's what we're going to do. But while, you know, sort of while they're waiting for Hamlet to arrive, they bury Ophelia, and it just so happens that Hamlet's there. This doesn't look like it's going to come out good. And to keep it brief, they do yell at each other um, after after the sort of the ceremony goes on and and the laertes complains that his daughter his uh sister isn't being buried with much um honor and the priest says you're lucky i'm even burying this girl 
and then Laertes jumps into the grave in his agony. When Hamlet sees that, he comes forward and he says, he, she was my girlfriend, and he jumps into the grave. And they start fighting about who's losing more, the boyfriend or the brother. And as they're arguing, okay, um, Gertrude and Claudius and, and Horatio are all standing there. And Claudius says, uh, he's mad, Laertes, don't hurt him. We, you know, And he doesn't say it out loud, but he's thinking, we have a plan. Don't worry about him right now. Hamlet says, how upset are you that your sister is dead? And he makes stupid examples of like, would you do this? Would you do that? Do you love her so much that you'd eat a crocodile, for example? It just, it, it's just sort of random craziness that he's saying and Gertrude even says at she even shouts out he's crazy Laertes don't hurt him and in the end of this you know sort of argument Hamlet says I don't even care you know let Hercules do what he wants every cat will meow and every dog will have his day and then he runs off he leaves um, he's actually, he's acting, you know, mad again, whether he's acting at this point, it's hard to say, but Claudia says, go keep an eye on your friend, would you? And Horatio goes off to do that. And then he says to Laertes, okay, he says, Laertes, strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. Remember, we have a plan. Well, we have something that we're going to do to get rid of him. So just an hour of quiet is all we need. Then, till then, in patience, our proceeding be, we, we're, it, in about an hour or so, we're going to set this in motion. Just, you got to be patient, okay? Just calm down. And that's the way the first scene of Act 5 ends.